If you look up the word Nederland in the dictionary, you'll see that it literally means lower lands. There aren't probably many countries on Earth with a name that describes their position so well. The Netherlands got its name back in the Middle Ages. Just imagine, 26% of the entire territory of the Netherlands is below sea level. And then add to that another 29% of the land that is flood prone and protected only by dams and dunes. Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be talking about the main enemy of the Netherlands, the sea, which this country has been fighting with throughout its history. Today, we'll take a look at the weapons this country uses in this confrontation and how effective they are. So the history of the Netherlands is the history of the incessant struggle of people fighting the sea. A quarter of the country's territory lies 5 to 7 meters below sea level. One-seventh of the land is at a height of only 1 meter above sea level. And only 1 50th of the country's territory is above the 50 meter mark. Since the times of the Roman Empire, the Netherlands has been reclaiming land from the sea. About 70% of the country's territory would have been flooded in the absence of coastal fortifications. Initially, the inhabitants of the flood-prone areas settled on artificial dwelling hills called Turpin or Weirden. Artificial hills were used starting from around 500 BC and until the development of embankments in the 13th century. An embankment is a system of protective structures, protective dams, or earthen ramparts that protect areas under the threat of flooding. A large number of medieval mounds have been preserved in the south and west of the country. They weren't designed for permanent residence, but provided shelter for the locals and the livestock. However, nature itself came to the aid of man there, protecting part of the coast with a rather wide row of sand dunes. But they weren't continuous, and the sand got scattered by the winds. So the locals started strengthening the dunes with various plants, while building dams and dikes in places of breaks. By the way, this is how the numerous geographical names with the ending dam originated. For example, Amsterdam, dam on the Amstel River, or Rotterdam, dam on the Rotter River. Further, the lakes that were cut off from the sea and formed canals between land islands began to dry up and starting from the 17th century turned into fields and meadows called polders. These polders were drained by using sluice grates that opened at low tides to let out the accumulated water. Later, they started using wind power to drain the water in the Netherlands. The drainage mills pumped out water using a scoop wheel and an Archimedes screw since 1634. The height to which the mill could raise the water was limited, so the Dutch started building several mills that would raise water through a cascade of tanks. The drainage mills played a significant role in the conquest of land before being replaced by diesel steam pumps. Improved pumps and construction methods provided a new level of protection from the elements. From the end of the 19th to the end of the 20th century, the Netherlands implemented several flood protection projects, and now the total length of protective dams is 3,500 kilometers, of which 1,430 kilometers are river dams, 1,017 kilometers are dams around lakes, and 430 and 260 kilometers are coastal dams and dunes, respectively. The system of man-made dams and works to drain and dry the land was the largest engineering project in the Netherlands in the 20th century. The project was named Zierdzee. The project included the construction of a dam that separated the Zierdzee from the North Sea and the transformation of land now occupied by inland waters into polders. The main goals of the project were to increase the area for food production and protect against floods. Work on the project began in 1920 and lasted for several decades. The main part of the project was the Aflusik Dam, which passed between the settlements of Den Over, North Holland, and Zurich, Friesland. The width of the dam is 90 meters. The initial height is 7.25 meters above sea level, and the slope of the walls is 25%. A 30-kilometer long dam separated the Zierdzee from the North Sea and turned it into the Iselmere freshwater lake. At the two ends of the dam, there are systems of locks for navigation and water pumping. In 1957, the Dutch drained parts of the lake, increasing the country's territory by 2,500 square kilometers. Later, the new province of Flevoland was created on the drained territory, with a population of about 400,000 people. On the night of January 31, 1953, a terrible storm broke out in the North Sea. Unfortunately, it coincided with the spring flood, a two-week high tide. 
during which the water level is at its highest. Amplified by flooding, the storm turned into one of the greatest natural disasters in the history of the Netherlands. A total of 200,000 hectares of land were flooded, and about 100,000 people lost their homes and property. The water level rose 5.6 meters above average. A total of about 2,400 people died. After the flood of 1953, a decision was made to fence off the eastern Scheldt with a dam, completely closing it from the sea. In 1967, the construction of three artificial islands began. However, this would mean that the former estuary would turn into a freshwater lake, which would completely reshape its ecosystem. Under the pressure from environmentalists, as well as fishermen, the dam was never completed. If the eastern Scheldt were closed off, the local fishing industry would also be severely affected, and fishing has always been the largest source of income there. There were two options that would make it possible to leave the eastern Scheldt open, either building 150 kilometers of dams to strengthen the coast, or, as it was decided in 1975, building a storm barrier. The decision was made in favor of the storm barrier, and thus, the Ooster Scheldt Caring, storm barrier of the eastern Scheldt, was built. It is the largest structure of the Delta Project, the purpose of which is to protect the Dutch lands from floods. The length of the barrier is 9 kilometers. It consists of 62 concrete pillars with giant 42-meter gates, gateways that are usually kept open, but are closed in adverse weather conditions. Since 1986, the giant steel gates have been closed 27 times to protect from waves above 3 meters in height. The last time was in February 2020. When the barrier was completed in 1986, the flow of water decreased and the tide dropped from 3.4 meters to 3.25 meters. At the opening of the Ooster Scheldt Caring, Queen Beatrix said, God created the earth, but the Dutch created the Netherlands. The implementation of the Delta Project was carried out from 1950 to 1997. During the implementation of the project, all distributaries of the Delta, except for the Western Scheldt, were blocked by dams or protective shields. The last element of the project, the Maeslink Caring Protective Barrier, was completed in 1997. This barrier is a gate that closes in case of a storm. Initially, it was planned to strengthen the existing dams, going 50 kilometers deep into the mainland. But in the 1980s, it became clear that the implementation of this idea would require about 30 years and significant financial investments. It would also lead to the destruction of historic city centers, some of which were built four centuries ago. Therefore, the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management organized a competition for the best plan to create a reliable and relatively inexpensive solution. The plan approved by the commission was to create two large floating gates, the leaves of which looked like circular sectors and were located on two banks opposite each other. Each leaf is 210 meters long and 22 meters high. A significant advantage of this option was that both the construction and routine maintenance could be carried out in dry docks, and no significant parts of the structure were underwater. Moreover, this type of barrier didn't cause any obstacles for passing ships. In the event that more than 3 meters of water is expected to rise in Rotterdam, the barrier closes automatically, protecting Europe's largest port. On November 8, 2007, a storm hit the countries of the North Sea, which created the conditions for initiating the procedure for closing the barrier, and Mesa Kantering was closed for the first time on a combat alert. The Ustershilkering and Hartlekering barriers were also closed during the storm, allowing full coastal protection to be implemented for the first time since Project Delta began. The Mesa Kering barrier is one of the largest moving structures on Earth. Today, the fact that the world ocean level will rise is no longer questioned. Humanity is now worried about how fast this process will be and what territories it threatens. According to the scientists, by the end of this century, the level of the ocean will rise by an average of 1.5 to 2 meters. Scientists predict that if the level of coastal waters rises by at least 1 meter, the largest cities of the Netherlands, Amsterdam and The Hague, will go underwater. This may happen within the next half century. According to the experts, tourists have about 20 years to enjoy the Amsterdam canals. Well, that's all for today. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you learned something. And if you believe that the ocean will rise by 1.5 or 2 meters by the end of the century. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time.